So good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. Um, we are talking about digital citizenship, Nearpod, and Common Sense today, um, as you can see from this title screen and when you registered for this webinar. Um, so thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to share this webinar um, in support of Digital Citizenship Week. Um, we will have a little bit more on that, hopefully, from Michelle, and it looks like um, I, I looks like Michelle might be um, getting on. I think I see someone that might be her in the um, participant list, so she'll talk about that a little bit in just a few minutes. But I want to do some housekeeping things first. Um, again, thank you all for joining us. And you may have noticed that you all are muted. You came into the call muted, and please keep your line muted. Um, that will minimize the background noise, which um, can be distracting throughout the call. So just keep yourself muted. But please use that chat window. Um, a lot of you have already introduced yourself, and I really appreciate that. That's good for the presenters to know who's here, and also um, so that you all can connect to each other. Don't just use the chat box to ask questions. Use it to ask questions, but don't only use it to ask questions. Please feel free to share. Um, this is um, especially true with this topic. Um, hopefully, I'm, I'm sure you guys are coming in at varying levels and degrees of your knowledge of di digital citizenship and what you're teaching and how you're teaching it. So um, please feel free to share some tips, tricks, lessons, et cetera, that you are using in your classroom. Um, also share questions. And um, I was also thinking it might be helpful for you to share the grade level that you teach. That might be helpful um, so that, again, you guys can make some connections um, because you know things are going to be um, more useful at different or handled differently at different grade levels. So if you also want to share what grade level you're teaching or if you have a question, share what grade level you're thinking about needing that um, question answered um, for. Um, go ahead and share that. And I think that's all. Oh, and in that chat window, make sure that you select send to everyone. Um, it will default to me. And although I want to know your questions and your comments, I want everyone else to be able to see those too. So make sure you select send to everyone. Um, you will have to change that in a little bit. I'll, I'll turn the presenter or the presentation over to um, one of our other presenters, and that will change. Again, that will probably reset, so you'll need to select that send to um, everyone option again. So um, I think that's all of my housekeeping. So on to just some things that we have coming up in the Office of eLearning. Um, I've got two more webinars scheduled. I didn't introduce myself, I don't think. My name is Mary Carnahan, and I'm the eLearning Resource Specialist with the Department of Education and the Office of eLearning. And um, this is one of the things that I get to do for my job is um, host these webinars. So that's who I am. Um, and we've got a few other webinars coming up. Um, we're going to be talking about the Speak Up survey next Tuesday. Um, if that is something interesting to you, please re um, feel free to join us. And then in a couple of weeks, the first week of October, we're going to be talking about augmented reality. Um, you can find more information about the Speak Up webinar right now on our website. If you go to our website and select professional development and then go to the eLearning lab, um, I'm going to be getting the information on the augmented reality uh, webinar up um, just in the next day or two. So you can um, look for that soon. Um, Twitter, we're always um, looking for ways to connect with you all and then to get you all connected. So Twitter is just a great way to do that on a daily basis. Um, remember to be using the INE Learn hashtag on a daily basis to connect to one another. And um, keep in mind that every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have a Twitter chat. And this week's topic is Be a Digital Leader, Focus on the Positives of Tech Integration. So we're looking forward to that topic. And as I mentioned just a little bit ago, this webinar is in support of Indiana Digital Citizenship Week, which is now. It is this week. Hopefully you all have heard about that. Um, so I want to pass the mic over to Michelle Green from our office, um, who's the, who is spearheading this um, Digital Citizenship Week. And she's going to tell you a little bit more about um, the things going on this week. So are you there, Michelle? And I can't hear you, Michelle, so let's see if we can figure out why not. I still can't. 
can't hear you, Michelle, and I don't know which person you are. So I'm going to try to unmute somebody that might be you. So Michelle, are you there? That is not you. Yes, I see that you're MG, Michelle, but I don't see you're not on the phone on that line or with that user. Pause one moment while we figure out our technical difficulties. Let me try one more. Let's see if this is you. Okay, try now, Michelle. Still nothing from Michelle. Bummer. Okay, so we are going to um, okay. She's going to try to call back in in just a moment. So we'll we'll I'll try to stretch my time. Um, Did you try either star, what is it, star six or pound six to unmute? Mary? Yes. Do you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. Oh, thank you. I belong to the world again. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're on. So to be very quick, Mary already mentioned that we have our chat on Thursday night, which is designed specifically for this week. And coincidentally, or serendipitously, whatever way you want to look at this, there are two other chats happening this week, also in the topic area of digital citizenship. The first is tonight, and Steve might even talk about this. It's dealing with a future-ready digital citizenship discussion. It goes along with the Connected Ed Day that's happening nationally today. And then on Wednesday, we were invited to be a part of NBC Learn Chat, which is their first back to school chat for the school year. This normally happens, uh, I believe, the second Wednesday of every month. They promote that pretty regularly. Uh, this topic is going to be around social media in the classroom or in schools. You'll see those both on our um, hashtag that we're using for this week. We can go ahead and skip to the next slide, Mary. Both of these slides I've also, or at least that last slide, I tweeted out. So if you go to Twitter, the hashtag INDigitWeek, you'll see uh, those dates there for you as well. There are three things that I ask that you consider this week if you do nothing other than attend this webinar. Um, the first is to take the pledge. And a lot of people are thinking that this pledge is for our kids, but this pledge is actually for all of us. So if you would pledge to de start developing positive habits, maybe you already have, but also to empower yourself as a learner, and part of that you're doing right now in this webinar. And then, of course, the modeling piece. So the pledge is actually really important for every one of us as adults to be working with students to have taken that and encourage them in, in that process. The second, we've asked if you would be um, willing to go into Common Sense Education and take the newly reformatted curriculum training program. It's a self-paced approximately an hour, but it's a wonderful module of all kinds of resources that will help acquaint you with their curriculum. And the third, and probably the most important to me, because Indiana Digital Citizenship Week is a misnamed, a misnamed uh, event. It's, it's not a week. It, this is a year-long process. This is an ongoing conversation. And so the only way to make that happen is if we have a community where we can do that. And of course, we can do that on the INE Learn handle when we're when we're, the, we're tweeting using the hashtag. But there's nice there's something about having a community. So the community digital citizenship 
I've tweeted that out as well, so you can find the link there, and um, we'll continue to tweet it all week long. Um, so please do consider doing that. I was just kind of glancing quickly to make sure there weren't any questions, because I feel like I just flew through that. But I want to turn it over to our guest today, because I'm very excited to hear what Josh and Steve have to share. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Michelle. Um, one quick question was, will the digital citizenship resources be available after this week? And I assume the answer is yes. You assume correctly. <laughs> okay. And they'll, st they'll be in the same place on our digital citizenship website? Yes. I will probably go and clean up our main page. But the um, beginning actually yesterday, we did a shortcut for our main page. So if you go to www.doe.in.gov, and just go to backslash digsit, as you see on that second page on the, the current slide. That will take you to our main page. At the very bottom of that, you can click on the, the logo for Digital Citizenship Week or use the quick links to access the pages which will be archived. Very cool. OK, thank you very much, Michelle. And hopefully everyone um, out there will be able to find a little something they can do this week um, that will um, you know, uh, further you know everybody's goal of being good digital citizens and 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 raising and teaching good digital citizens. Um, so thank you, Michelle. Um, so let's quickly turn things over to our presenters. We have Josh Tappen here from Nearpod and Steve Garten from Common Sense Education. And you know our goal today is is to um, help you find ways to teach digital, digital citizenship. And that's not only learning about digital citizenship, but having tools to utilize in your schools and in your classrooms. So this is, a, this is a nice opportunity to not only learn more about digital citizenship, but also some great tools to utilize in your school and in your classroom. And we're happy to have Josh and Steve joining us here today. So I'm going to turn the presentation over to you, Josh, and the mic over to both of you. Thank you, Mary. We are darn excited, darn excited to be here. Josh, if you want to bring up your presentation, we're ready to roll. And everyone, don't forget to, again, change All right. um, your send to to everyone. Um, it might change to Josh now that we're changing presenters. All right. So I should you should be able to see my screen here. and. In the chat, I pasted a, a link uh, to a Nearpod lesson, which is where we're going to work from today. So you can either go on to nearpod.com and type in this PIN number or click that share.nearpod.com link that you see in the chat. And that PIN number, if you, if you notice on the top left here, that will be available the whole time. So, you know, don't fret if you... Don't get it in right away, but you can also just click that link and sign in directly. And with that, I will hand it over to Steve. Okay, thanks, Josh. I just want to give you a very quick introduction for those of you that don't know Common Sense uh, Education. I assume that you probably do know us. Um, I'm Steve Garten, and Josh, I think you can run the presentation here. I can't, yes. I'm Steve Garten, I'm Senior Manager at Common Sense. I love working for Common Sense because people either don't know us or they love us. Um, Common Sense is a nonprofit. I was talked into joining them when I was uh, previous to Common Sense. I was a technology coordinator for the state of Maine, um, you know, doing the one-to-one -one for the whole the whole state, and and we really piloted and helped develop a lot of the Common Sense materials when they were putting those out to do that, realizing it was such a valuable thing. And when Jeff Mao came and said, "Hey, do you want to come with me to Common Sense?" I immediately jumped on. So it's exciting. Um, the other stuff there, I was a classroom teacher for a long time, and, and technology really saved my life as a teacher. Without it, you know, that first year my desk was cleaned out. There's no way I was coming back for year two, um, but that's why they have summers. So teachers will come back, and the student mortality rate will be lower. So I did come back, and by the third year, I absolutely loved my teaching. So go ahead and jump to the next one. Um, common Sense is a nonprofit which means we're, we're really all in this for the right reason. We're not in it to, to make any money. We're in it to, to make sure that, that any funds that come in go to directing to what we do. We started really with uh, by partnering with Harvard 
um, to, to develop our resources and really and really figure out how we were going to do this. So our role is really to advocate for kids. Our role is to help provide the tools that people can use, um, both for the digital citizenship piece, which we're talking about today, and also using technology effectively. Our ratings and reviews are, are very popular. They're getting out there, and we really have critical mass on what's, what's going on there. Um, the thing to remember about Common Sense is just go to Common Sense Education. Our resources are there. We've got plenty of stuff for you to look at, and we'll talk about a few of those things today. Next slide, Josh. Um, why is digital citizenship important? I think, I think we all know this, uh, that, that kids need it, and not only kids, but teachers, parents, everybody needs this because we really want to feel that our students are safe. Um, parents are always asking the question, what are you doing to keep my kids safe? Um, teachers are often fearful of, well, I can't let them do this or that. Um, students are always frustrated because, well, I, I need these tools. I have them at home and I don't have them at school. Um, so what we'll do today is we'll go through a, a few of the resources that we're providing to help that because I think it's really the communication piece that we need to have most. Teachers need to be comfortable. Students need to be comfortable. Parents need to be comfortable, and everybody else needs to be comfortable. Um, I found that a lot of schools, when they start implementing programs, the administration gets scared right off the bat. It's like, well, we can't have Facebook here. It's going to be, you know, now I'm just going to have to deal with all these problems. Um, but we found that the opposite actually turns out to be true, that while there is a lot of drama and things that are going on out there, once you have sort of a system in place where students know how to do a screen capture, Teachers know what to do when a student brings something to them, and then administrators have this documentation when it comes in. So it's actually been much easier to manage some of the drama that happens out there, um, as well as getting the information out there to sort of prevent some of this and know what's going on. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, the big thing for kids is, is I'm not addicted to the technology. I am addicted to my friends. Um, we found, we just did a recent survey, and I don't want to take the time today to, to, to talk about all the details, but we found that students don't even have social media in their top list of things that they really like to do. It's really just the communication piece, and it's not what they, what they do. They still mostly like to watch shows. They like to, you know, they do a lot of video things and that. And, and they do talk to their friends a lot. But technology now to them is what the phone was for me back in the dark ages when you did that. Um, we just talked on the phone a lot. So it's really about the friends they're doing, and we have to figure out as educators how to best put this in so that we can leverage this, this platform that they're on. Next slide, please. I think we all know that the need for digital citizenship sort of encompasses all the things that you're looking at there. But, but I want to point out that the need for digital citizenship is really mostly positive. It's, yeah, while there are some negative things we need to be aware of, there's some things we have to, to make sure people understand, it's really about the community building. It's about how do we use these resources effectively? How do we, how do we document what we're doing? How do we, have this, how do we cultivate our positive footprint um, as well as avoiding the risk, risky situations? And I'd like to point out that our resources really are focusing on the positive thing. And I found that you know a list of rules, while it's important, out of context just becomes rules and then the technology really isn't useful. So make sure that you're embracing the positive things and think why am I using this technology in the first place and then how do we get some kind of a system in place to make sure that we're using it effectively, safely, um, and that we're really taking advantage of what's there. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, different ages have diff very different needs. In the elementary school, obviously, we, we have more control and we need to have more control. In the elementary, the, the kids really need to learn, okay, what shouldn't I do? How do I stay safe? What do I do? How do I effectively search? How do I, you know, so it's really very basic things that they're trying to learn, and we want to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that we protect our elementary kids. When we get to middle school, middle schoolers, believe it or not, know where the line is. I taught middle school for eight years, and I find that hard to believe that they did, but they know where the line is. What they don't know is what happens when I cross that line. Yes, I know this probably isn't what I should do, but what happens when I do it? Because they're looking for those boundaries. They're trying to push them a little bit, find out what's going on. And, and the resources we're going to talk about today for the middle schoolers are really designed to let them step over that in a safe way. We encourage them to make wrong choices on some of the, 
the uh, materials that we're providing so that they can see, well, yeah, I know this is bad, but what happens when I do this? What happens if I overshare? What happens if I lie on the Internet? What happens if I put something else out and then to do that? And then the high school, our curriculum really deals with the gray areas because by the time they get to high school, um, they, they really need to talk about, about what am I going to do to put my footprint out there, to put my impression, and to make my, my mark on the world to do that. Um, and they really need to talk about uh, where am I going to go, how am I going to do this, and, and I think our materials do a really good job of talking about the gray areas and getting that discussion about, well, what do I do if somebody posts something on, on, the, on the website that I put out there, that, and it's not true. They're sort of changing things around or doing that. What happens, what do I believe when it's out there? You know, if people are saying things about me or I'm saying things about something else, you know, what's okay and what's not okay? And I think the high school really is all about the gray areas. So we really have completely different curriculums. We've got a full K-12 thing, and Josh is going to talk about some specific parts of it today. Um, but find where you are, look up the stuff, and then we're ready to go. Um, this is the common sense information here. Our mission really is to just keep schools safe, keep kids safe, advocate for, for students, advocate for safety, and provide a lot of resources to do that. Um, feel free to, you know, contact us any way you want, um, and, and we'll be more than happy to help you out. I live in southern Ohio, uh, really close to Indiana. Spent a lot of time in Indiana and planning on spending a lot more. So you've got a lot of good things, a lot of good people happening, um, and I'm excited to be able to support the work you're doing. And I'm close enough that I can actually come over there and do something in person as opposed to all this virtual stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Josh, who's going to lead us through some actual activities as we talk about how are we going to apply all of this stuff. All right. Thank you, Steve. And so as, as Steve said in that, that warm, uh, welcoming intro, I'm, I'm Josh, and I manage professional development and uh, teacher community here at Nearpod. Uh, prior to joining Nearpod about a year and a half ago, um, I was a middle school science teacher in Atlanta Public Schools in Georgia. And, you know, if you'd like to get in touch there at the bottom, um, there's my, my Twitter handle. And, you know, similar to Steve as a, as a classroom teacher, uh, really, really leveraged technology to help engage my students, you know, connect them to real world uh, relevant activities that related to their learning and just make my job easier as a teacher. So it's exciting to kind of uh, move to the, to the ed tech world, but still be able to work and connect with teachers to, to kind of help them uh, adopt technology and integrate technology in their classroom uh, in a meaningful way. So with that said, let's, uh, let's do a little exploration of the common sense education, digital citizenship curriculum on Nearpod. Um, so once again, if you haven't joined yet, I see 10 people have joined. So I'm actually using the Nearpod platform to show you some of these kind of interactive activities and different uh, mini lessons that we have for, for grades K through 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 12. So it's a comprehensive digital citizenship curriculum that really connects with some of the topics that, that Steve was talking about earlier. Um, and here I can see that a, a few people have joined, and, and if you haven't yet, there's that link in the, that share.nearpod.com link. All you have to do is click on it and just put in your first name, and then you're kind of connected with us. And those who are connected will notice that we're, we're synchronized as well. So when I change the slide, your slides will change as well. Um, so here's kind of a deeper look into the curriculum that shows kind of the scope and sequence and the different topics. So some of the topics that Steve uh, had mentioned earlier, internet safety, privacy and security, relationships and communication, cyberbullying, digital drama, digital footprint, self-image, self information literacy. And notice that a lot of these topics are covered across grade levels, and the lessons are really developed in an age-appropriate way, and they're accessible to students from K through 12. Um, you know, perhaps the, the 12th graders are going to learn more about establishing your online identity um, and what, what to share and what not to share. And then down in kindergarten for privacy and security, students might be learning about uh, creating a password or what information is safe to share, on um, what information should you ask your parents about before sharing. So the curriculum, you know, Common Sense developed an unbelievable, uh, awesome curriculum that really uh, approaches a lot of these topics in a sensitive and age-appropriate way. 
Um, so why are we sharing it on Nearpod? Well, Nearpod is a, is a platform that allows teachers to deliver and synchronize kind of real-time activities, assessments, and feedback. And if you combine that with what's really a well-researched, uh, well-written curriculum, you get a really powerful classroom tool. Um, so it kind of creates this interactive experience to talk about, um, you know, appropriate and responsible behavior on the Internet. As you'll notice here, you know, as, as Steve had mentioned, it empowers students to behave responsibly with technology. Um, the curriculum is aligned to Common Core ELA and ISTE National EdTech Standards, and it helps schools uh, comply with E-rate funding requirements by teaching uh, these lessons. So let's let's experience this. Let's let's see what this might look like in the classroom. So those of you who are, who are connected, I see you know 12 of you connected up here. And once again, one more reminder: if you're not, you can just click that the uh, share.nearpod.com link in the chat, and you'll be connected with us. So let's check out what this uh, these activities might look like in a classroom. So starting with a K through two lesson, which teaches students about going places safely. Every lesson uh, written by Common Sense that's, that's on Nearpod starts with an essential question, as any, as any great lesson will. So this question is all about how do you go places safely on the computer? And staying safe is just like staying safe when we go places in real life. So a lot of these lessons connect things that students already know uh, to uh, some what might be a new environment, which is online or on a computer, especially considering this is for, for K through two students who may be just kind of, uh, maybe they're getting their first phone or their first computer, and now they have access to phones and computers at home. So what this lesson does is really relate what going places in real life uh, and how that relates to going places in the virtual world. So one great thing I love about, uh, you know, the common sense uh, curriculum on Nearpod is that it not only teaches this, this great information, but it does it in an interactive way. So you'll see here what's called a Nearpod virtual field trip. And for those of you who are connected, you can click and drag around this environment and, you know, this is really engaging for kids. Kids love exploring things like this. If you're on a tablet or a mobile device, you can actually pick up your device and move it around, and the sensors will actually uh, let you navigate and investigate the environment uh, as you kind of move it around. So this is super engaging for kids, but it's also connected to the learning objective and the essential question. And we want kids to think about here, what might be a good rule or what might be a good guideline if you were investigating or if you were here at this place? So if you were here in real life, uh, what, would a, what would a good rule be? So we want, to, uh, we, we want students to think about how, yeah, there we go. So feel free to share some of your thoughts. Like what, what might be a rule for, for investigating this place in, um, in real life, if we were here in real life? So this kind of transports kids. Um, it's, it's engaging. Uh, it really connects them with something they might, may have never seen before. It has, definitely has a cool factor, but we're connecting it back to what might a good guideline be if we were here on a class field trip. Now we're going to go to another place and want you to think of another rule for staying safe. So if we're here, a little bit different of a place, it's a little bit more crowded. So think about what might be a good rule for staying safe if the whole class was here. <laughs> Thanks, Susie. Watch your wallet. I like that. <laughs> and then finally, to tie it back in the lesson, uh, what is one rule that you might need to follow to stay safe in these places? So go ahead and type your answer into the into the Nearpod uh, into the Nearpod website or app, depending on where you're connected. And I'll show you how this really allows teachers to collect and share real-time feedback to make these digital citizenship lessons really student-centered and student-driven. And what you're seeing on my screen is the teacher dashboard. And for those of you who are logged in, you'll notice that you are on, you just see your own answer. So take like 10 more seconds, you know, this obviously isn't a digital citizenship quiz, so if you don't get to answer, no worries.
All right, so now watch what happens here. I see the student list on my screen, on this, on this teacher screen, and I can see student answers. Um, when I share that back to your devices, you'll notice that the answers are shared anonymously. So it's more about the sharing of ideas rather than having, you know, only the, the over-eager students raise their hand. Perhaps there's a shy student in the back who doesn't like to raise their hand, but they have really, you know, interesting thoughts uh, about what the question is or about what the lesson is. So Nearpod allows you as the teacher to kind of survey student responses, get real-time feedback, and then it allows you to share those answers anonymously. Now, if I was in a K2 class, I'm not sure I would share, don't be an idiot, but I certainly appreciate, uh, I certainly appreciate the answer. Um, so, so here's where we can start sharing different answers and asking students to share. Um, so we have pay attention to your surroundings, stick with your group. We have follow directions. Um, from here, you notice that it's not me as the teacher coming up with a list of rules of how to stay safe in, in certain areas. Um, what you're doing is taking student responses and really making that the highlight of the lesson. So it's not me, you know, dictating rules and saying the number one rule of searching on the internet is this, the second rule is this. It's establishing a set of rules and norms as a class and, and using student responses to really drive that conversation. So notice it's participatory, it's student-driven, and, and students have ways to contribute actively uh, to the lesson. Um, another example that we're going to go through, one of my favorite uh, lessons and, and something that I think really um, highlights what Steve was talking about, about staying positive with digital citizenship, and, and it's not this is what you shouldn't do, here are all the bad things that could happen, but really trying to stay positive and having kids look at their role on the Internet in a positive light. And it's about really behaving responsibly, behaving responsibly, not really adhering to a strict set of rules and guidelines and scare tactics. Um, so here we have a lesson about uh, being a super digital citizen. And, you know, the question here is for thir three through five, notice we've stepped up a grade level, um, is how can we help others be good digital citizens? Uh, every, every lesson from K through 12, there are, there are learning objectives. So here, uh, in, this, in this full lesson, notice these are just examples of the activities. This isn't the full lesson. Um, we'll compare our responsibilities to online and offline communities. Once again, connecting that, that making that idea across grade levels that behaving offline and, and online aren't uh, so different. You know, they, they, they're the same guidelines. So behave online. Imagine if you were talking to a person uh, in the real world, if you're going to make comments to them online. And think about how you'd behave in your classroom as you would online. Um, reflect on the characteristics that make someone an upstanding citizen and construct resolutions to digital dilemmas. Uh, so we're going to consider uh, the motto of the classic superhero movie, Spider-Man, which is with great powers comes great responsibility. And here, once again, here's a question right off the bat in the lesson uh, that lets students kind of participate and share their thoughts. What do you think Spider-Man means by his motto? And for those of you who are thinking ahead, you can really imagine how during this lesson we're going to connect um, this superhero quote, you know, which a lot of students can relate to. Uh, it's relevant. It's modern. Uh, this superhero quote to how you sh can or should behave when you are on the Internet. So since we already kind of saw this activity, I'll just keep skipping. I'll, I'll move ahead so we can see an example. Um, but you can imagine here the powerful conversations that can take place as students kind of explain their thoughts to this great power and great responsibility and then make connections to online situations that they may have faced. So let's move forward here. I'll give you 10 seconds if you want to submit a response. That's, that's awesome. And here, remember, at, at any point in time as the teacher, I can share student answers back anonymously, and I can see who's participating and at what rate. So once again, encouraging that 100% participation, kind of collecting every student's thoughts. Uh, Michelle noted that this is a suggested lesson uh, for Thursday grades 3 through 5. Um, so what we can do after is uh, share this out as a resource uh, to everyone who's, who's online uh, for, for the webinar. 
And then, you know, connecting this once again, this kind of real world quote from the movie about what the quote means in general, connecting it specifically uh, to internet powers. And then this, this lesson as a whole is really fun because at the end, students actually get to draw. There's an interactive whiteboard feature in Nearpod where students get to draw uh, their, their internet superhero and what his motto, his or her motto is. So they get to create their own internet superhero on their, on their iPads or on their laptops upload it and share it with the rest of their class. So it, it really makes this responsible internet behavior, it makes it fun, it's interactive, it's participatory, it's, it's student driven. Um, and then, you know, to, to step up another grade level to show an example of, of how this curriculum looks for older grade students, grades six through eight, this is taking uh, cyberbullying, a topic that's, you know, very relevant. I know that, you know, when I was a, a middle school teacher, uh, this was this was a big issue with the school, and it's a tough conversation to, to discuss, and I think being proactive about it and making it positive by framing students who kind of stand up for one another uh, as, as upstanders, and it's not, once again, the, the don't do this and don't do that and this is bad. And it's not, it's not scaring kids, it's, it's, it's teaching kids how to behave responsibly on the Internet. And notice that's a common thread through all the lessons we've looked at so far. Um, so Nearpod also allows you to play, play videos within a lesson and create videos within a lesson. So here is a, is, is a way to teach a sensitive topic and let kids empathize with a student who is cyberbullied. And I won't play the whole video, um, but just showing another example of how multimedia assets can be shared within Nearpod lessons. You know, this is, this is very sensitive. You know, some, sometimes students might not want to share their own experiences, but perhaps hearing about another student who has been bullied online and how that made her feel will help students empathize and open up and really think about how their actions can influence people in real life online. Um, the, the lessons from Nearpod and Common Sense also encourage in-class participation. So it's not just kids, you know, with their heads down looking at iPads. You know, they just watch this, this pretty heavy video. Um, and now we're going to do a turn and talk about what students thought of the video, what they learned from the video. So kind of taking that digital citizenship um, from offline to in-person and really leveraging the power of, of, of you as a teacher being in class with 20 to 30 students who all, you know, experience and, and, and live with these topics on, on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, the curriculum also seeks to kind of uh, leverage technology to encourage in-class or in-person participation. And, and here you'll see, this is, this is an example of Nearpod's Draw It feature, and you'll see that there are a bunch of different ways at the bottom of your screen uh, to draw different things, and I'll show you what this looks like on the student side here. So this is an example of kind of a, one of the interactive whiteboard activities I was discussing earlier, uh, which allows students to either draw, highlight, write text boxes, or take a picture. Um, and here it's asking you to read the story and highlight bullies, uh, targets, and bystanders. So you can use the highlighter key there. Um, I'm just going to quickly, I'm not doing this properly. I would not get this correct. But you can, you know, choose different colors to highlight. And this really, once again, lets students be active. Uh, you're not just sharing the definition of bystander and upstander and telling them what to do and what not to do, but they're really thinking about uh, a situation and you're, and you're putting them, uh, they're taking the perspective of the students in this story and actively participating in the lesson. In the, in, the, uh, in the lesson. So this is an example of a draw activity that's used uh, kind of across K through 12 uh, grade levels and just wanted to share that with you to show another example of, of an engaging activity that can help your students uh, learn about some of these sensitive topics. And then after the after the lesson's over, you can access reports on Nearpod. So anyone who has a Nearpod uh, account and teaches with these lessons, there'll be reports after. Um, I know that some schools require uh, teachers to teach uh, digital citizenship. So if you have that requirement, the Nearpod report that's automatically created in your account uh, will kind of keep track of that for you. And you can share that report with your administrator or whoever you need to, or, or parents or students. Um, you can share back student answers with them. Uh, kind of whenever you want. Those reports are there for you uh, whenever you want them. 
And then, you know, another example of a, of a little bit more of a mature topic for high schoolers is uh, breaking down hate speech. So talking about what, once again, is, is a, it's a sensitive topic and also a relevant topic and a current topic. Um, and students get to discuss uh, kind of what hate, hate speech looks like online um, and connecting that to kind of in-person interactions. You know, would you say the things that, that you see online if it were an in-person interaction or you had to see that person? So getting students to really think about sensitive and relevant topics um, in an engaging kind of interactive way. So this shares, this lesson specifically for, for high school students shares an article uh, by NBC News that talks about some derogatory comments and hate speech that are used in, in online uh, video games. So this would be kind of a read aloud uh, for high schoolers and notice that this, uh, this article pops up in your browser that talks about hate speech corroding online games. So sharing a relevant current article with students uh, to show them that, hey, this is not just a curriculum, this is, this is very closely connected to, to the real world and things that are happening in your, in your everyday lives. So this would be more of a read aloud activity with high schoolers, you know, connecting topics of digital citizenship to current events. And then after that, once again, asking students to reflect on what they just read. Um, I would like to save um, a lot of time for, for questions and answers. Maybe quickly I can show you how to access some of these lessons. So one thing to note is that uh, the entire curriculum can be had, this can be found on Common Sense's website. There's a PDF and an iBooks form. Um, those, I would say, I mean, I'm a little bit biased because I, I work at Nearpod, but they're, they're, not, they're not as interactive. But the Nearpod curriculum, as you just saw, is very interactive and participatory. Um, it typically costs money. However, we want to make it accessible to uh, as many people as possible. So we're giving away one copy of the curriculum to each U.S. public school. So uh, I will share contact information uh, in a follow-up to this. Actually, I'll share, it. I'll share it in the chat box for now, and I'll share it as a follow-up to this webinar, too, to let you know how to get uh, this curriculum. So if you want to email me with uh, Joshua T at nearpod.com with your grade level and subject area, uh, we'll, we'll hook you up with that curriculum. And if you have a Nearpod account, which is free to sign up for, uh, you can access the Common Sense curriculum through the Explore tab on the Nearpod website and where it says Search Lessons. If you search Digital, digital Citizenship, you'll see each of those uh, curriculum bundles pop up. So there's full curriculum, 18 lessons kind of per grade band. Uh, and then there's also light lessons. So these lessons are kind of, uh, you know, samplers for each portion of the curriculum, K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 9 through 12. And like I said, on the Common Sense website, you can also access the curriculum uh, for free in PDF or iBook form. So with that said, um, yeah, we'll, we'll open it up to questions. And Josh, and, uh, you, Mary, yeah. yeah, the question that I just put, somebody had asked if the free curriculum was only for public schools. So the free curriculum uh, for now is only for public schools. If you email me your uh, situation, I can certainly see if we can make an exception. Uh, but the idea was to make it, you know, as accessible as possible uh, for, for all public schools. Um, if you'd like to have the curriculum available beyond that kind of one copy, like if, if, if you'd like every teacher to get the, the curriculum, there are definitely Nearpod subscriptions that you can, that you can learn more about on our, on our, on our website at nearpod.com. Um, or if you'd like more information about that, you can, you can email me as well. Okay, and I'm going to clarify um, Michelle. It looks like Michelle Hauser. I'm guessing that she works, she's over the whole school district, mm -hmm. but there are multiple schools within that district. So would that be okay. a copy of the curriculum for each of the schools within that district? 
Yeah, so Michelle, about that, if, if there's, um, let's say there's a, let's, a librarian or media specialist at each school, I know that's, that's typically how digital citizenship is rolled out as far as I remember or as far as my experience goes. Um, so if there's an individual name for each school or a school name and then an individual name, that would probably be the best way to, to do it. Um, so, so yes, there can be a copy of the curriculum per school. And then, like I said, as I mentioned, if, um, if you'd like it for more than one teacher, there are different like Nearpod premium accounts available uh, that also come with the ability to like create your own lessons or download other lessons. Um, but yeah, this, uh, yeah, we can certainly help you out with multiple school sites if you, if you send me an email. Yes, yeah, so and Michelle Green mentioned that um, sometime in, in Indiana we've got um, media specialists, but we've also got the e-learning coaches who are sometimes um, kind of overseeing the digital citizenship in their schools. So um, whether you're a media specialist, a librarian, an e-learning coach, um, whatever you are, if you're taking care of the digital citizenship in your school, get in touch with Josh about that um, license, um, about that curriculum. And uh, Susie had a question about teachers already on Nearpod accessing these lessons. So with certain school and district accounts, the, the lessons will be free. So you'll see I, I, you know, I work at Nearpod, so I kind of have the unlimited account. So all of these lessons are free for me. Uh, in some accounts, they will be paid. So like the, the free teacher subscription, like if, if anyone here who doesn't have an account signed up for a new account, these, a lot, there's a lot of free lessons, um, but some of them cost money too, including the digital citizenship full curriculum. However, like I said, there are these sample lessons or these light lessons uh, that are available for free. And then also for a free way to teach this, there is the uh, common sense kind of PDF curriculum. Not as interactive, but the lessons are still great. It's basically the same curriculum, um, except it's, it's either iBooks-based um, or uh, paper-based. So here you can see there's, there's uh, iBooks lessons, Nearpod lessons, assessments, um, a scope and sequence, which I believe is where you can find the find the PDF. So that's available. There are there are free options available. Um, like I said, probably not as interactive. But if there are, if you do have a Nearpod school or district uh, subscription, uh, you, the teachers may be able to access all of these lessons for free. Very good. Anyone else? What other questions do y'all have? Either for um, Josh regarding the Nearpod piece or Steve regarding the common sense piece or we still have Michelle Green um, on the line who can answer questions um, if you have any about the resources that are available um, through our website. We'll give everybody a second or two. Um, and so if you do have specific um, questions about that Nearpod um, curriculum quest or um, subscription, definitely get in contact with Josh and he can, um, because everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different. So definitely get in touch with him um, regarding that great um, opportunity that he's giving, that, that, that Nearpod is giving to those um, individual schools. I'd just like to make a quick comment that Indiana yeah. is very lucky to have Mary, Michelle, and people like that working very hard towards this. There, there are, you know, some states are trying to support, but really not to the level that you've got going there. So I just want to send a quick shout out to the Department of Education and everybody that's working hard to make that work. And, and you, you really are doing some good things, and it'll pay dividends down the road. Thanks for that, Steve. It's, um, it, it's um, an important topic, and luckily Michelle is very passionate about it and, and brought that with her when she came to um, the DOE. So um, yay, Michelle, and, and it's great to work on a team um, that's supportive of that and have um, a boss and bosses who are also supportive of that move. So, <laughs> well, it is quiet on the question front. So um, I'm guessing that you guys, oh, there's one more. So a question from Carolyn. Yeah, um, Carolyn, yeah, I would say that, it, so the, the 
you'll notice if you check out the PDF or iBooks curriculum options that it would take quite some time uh, and a lot of resources to create your own lessons. Um, it can be done. I would say that it would be a little challenging, um, but it, it, it certainly is possible. Um, you know, I know that per personally it, it, it did take us a lot of work to kind of think through, you know, what type of interactive activities and assessment questions would go best with the, with each, within each individual lesson. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's certainly possible. Uh, but like I said, if you, if you reach out to me, we can, we can get a copy of the curriculum, of the interactive curriculum at your school so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, so, so yes, it definitely can be done if you want to take the time to do it. Um, but uh, it would be time consuming. Believe, I, and I'm speaking from experience there. So yeah. All right. Well, it is quiet, and that's a that's a fun idea, Michelle, to use the curriculum to create breakout EDU activities. Um, that would be fun, also. Well, it is quiet. It's 4:55, so I am guessing that people's questions have been answered. Um, okay, there's one more that just popped up. Josh, do you need a school or district near pod? Does that mean a Nearpod subscription? Oh, yes, yeah, a Nearpod subscription in order to develop lessons. So, yes, you do. Not a school or district. So I'll show you. I mean, if I go on Nearpod.com right now, I'm going to have to sign out of my account. But if I, 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 anyone can sign up for free lessons. So once again, part of part of what we want to do is make Nearpod accessible to as many teachers as possible, um, as well as make the digital citizenship curriculum accessible. So if your school or district doesn't buy one, you still have access to the tool and access to the curriculum. So if I go to nearpod.com, I can sign up as an individual without a school or district subscription. You will automatically have access to those four quote unquote light lessons that I showed, um, and you will have access forever to the Nearpod kind of lesson creator. After how it works is after about a month, you'll have a, um, like a free account. You'll be downgraded from premium to free. You'll still have access to the, any lessons you created within the first 30 days, but you'll also have access to the lesson creator and some of the basic activities uh, like quizzes, open-ended questions, polls, um, and then there's some more, I guess, what we'd call advanced features such as you know, embedding the virtual field trips and the interactive whiteboard activity that are restricted to the school or district accounts. Um, you know, and they're kind of the reason we do that is, you know, to be honest, to continue to improve the platform and build out great curriculum like the Common Sense. I mean, we need to uh, make some sort of salary. <laughs> so, so yeah, everyone, anyone can sign up for a Nearpod account. Teachers can use it for free. There are school and district edition options that can include uh, the common sense curriculum for free, as well as additional lessons for free. So any of the lessons that you see in the Nearpod store. Um, but yeah, we, like I said, we want to make it accessible. So if you're in this chat and at a school that doesn't have a Nearpod school or district account and perhaps can't afford a school or district account, we can hook you up with the digital citizenship curriculum. And you'll also have uh, access to the kind of individual free account edition. Okay, and one other question popped up. How long is the 30% deal going on? That is a good question. Um, I am not sure, um, but if there is an option for a follow-up uh, email with some resources to people who attended, I can certainly include that in there. Mary, would that okay. be possible? Sure. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, Selena, I can include that in a, in a follow-up email. Okay, I think we have about hit five o'clock. So I am going to, um, so I think hopefully by now everybody's gotten Steve and Josh's info from there. I'm just going to put up our um, final little contact slide also, um, just in case anybody hasn't seen it in a while.
Okay. So um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, Josh and Steve, thank you guys very much. That was a lot of super information. And um, for those people who aren't using the Common Sense resources yet or aren't using Nearpod to get to those Common Sense resources, hopefully um, people out there have, have um, found this to be helpful and useful and um, have found new ways to be teaching digital citizenship to their students. And again, visit our website. Follow us on Twitter. Follow that I and eLearn hashtag. Um, and the, um, I'm going to do the hashtag wrong, Michelle, so I'll let you type it, the Digital Citizenship Week hashtag. I'm not even going to say it because I'm going to say it wrong. But um, follow that Digital Citizenship Week hashtag. There it is. Um, this week, just to get some great resources, share what you're doing. Um, brag on yourself. Brag on your kids. Brag on your school. Um, we definitely want to know what's going on um, all over the state and even outside of the state. We've got this um, worldwide connection now, so that's very cool. So thank you all very much. Um, get in contact with us if you need anything or have any questions. Also, if you've got any great webinar ideas, we'd love to hear from you and hear those. And just um, stay in touch with us, and hopefully we'll see you on a future webinar or Twitter chat. So thank you all very much.